In this quick video, we want to give you three tips you can start using today to help normalize estrogen levels in your body. Ready to fight estrogen and take it down? Let's go. Today's video is all about practical tips you can use right now to start making a difference. We've got three easy tips for you we don't want you to miss, so keep watching. Oestrogen is necessary in the body, especially in women, but also in men. There are, however, a host of problems associated with too much oestrogen, ranging from weight gain in the short term to cancer in the long term. The tips we're giving you today are so easy, you'll barely even realize you're using them because they take no effort whatsoever. It's important to say, don't expect sudden weight loss just because you managed to reduce estrogen. But if you are trying to lose weight or build muscle or just have an overall healthier lifestyle, these tips will support you greatly. Also, we know some people take blood tests to determine their levels of estrogen, and we know our tips will have a great effect. If you're one of those people that test it frequently, we'd really appreciate it if you drop us a comment below with your results. And also for anyone else out there who's struggling with their estrogen, they would appreciate it too. Okay, our three tips are, one, sleep away from your phone at night. Two, be mindful of how you heat your food. And three, eat more broccoli. Let's expand on the science behind each of these. The phone hack comes down to production of melatonin. You see, your body is amazing at self-regulating with multiple mechanisms in place. One powerful mechanism is melatonin, which happens to downregulate estrogen, or in other words, suppress estrogen. If you get more melatonin, you reduce your estrogen levels. It's as simple as that. Sleep is a big, complex subject, and there's a lot of things you can do to improve it, as well as melatonin production. One of the easiest ones is making sure you're nowhere near your phone at night. Non-ionizing radiation, such as Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, and cellular technologies like 3G, 4G, 5G, they may not have significant thermal effects, which makes them appear safe, but they have multiple effects on your body in terms of calcium channels in your cells, as well as mitochondrial health. One of the very well documented effects is on the pineal gland, which is located in your brain. And the higher the power and the longer the exposure, the more disruption you get to melatonin production. So basically, if you sleep with your phone next to your bed or your router nearby, or maybe wireless headphones, or even smart speakers, these devices transmit radio waves. Unlike the radio, say, in your car, these are extremely high powered and depending on which tech's being used, transmit every few seconds, even though you're not using them. Take a look at that. What you want to do is switch your phone to airplane mode, but also make sure your bed is at least three meters away from any transmitting device because the closer you are to them, the greater the power and the exposure. If you want to take it even further, you can get a professional meter for about 150 quid and try and get exposure levels to under 0.01 milliwatts per meter square. By moving your devices away from you when you sleep, your pineal gland can work undisturbed, creating more melatonin, which will result in lower estrogen. Our second tip is about cooking. We want you to stop using plastic containers for your food if you use a microwave, for example. But also to stop using cookware that tends to leak a lot of toxins into food, like traditional non-stick pans. Your best bet is to go for cast iron, ceramic or titanium. They come in various combinations. Not all of them are perfect, but they are a million times better and they leak less toxins into your food than traditional non-stick pans. Why does this matter? Well, getting clean food and water is not only healthy, it also has a direct impact on your estrogen levels. When your body encounters toxins, many of them are called endocrine disruptors. It traps them in fatty tissues. This also promotes the formation of estrogen, which is involved in fat gain. The more toxins you get, 
the more your body has reason to store fat by moving those toxins away from your bloodstream to protect you. And ironically, the more fat cells you have, the more estrogen your body will produce. Our last tip is to eat more broccoli. There are a few leafy greens that fit this category well, as well as a supplement called DIM, and you can even find this compound in a highly bioavailable form in broccoli. This substance, DIM, helps in suppressing aromatase, an enzyme that would otherwise take all that precious free testosterone and convert it into nasty estrogen. We talk a lot about testosterone and how it helps upregulate beta receptors on fat cells, which helps you in fat loss. As well as suppressing fat gain by suppressing lipoprotein lipase and fat cells differentiation. Or basically how testosterone helps prevent fat gain and helps fat loss become that little bit easier. Regardless of how many of our videos you watched and how many steps you've taken to improve your testosterone, you want to keep as much as you can. You don't want to turn this helpful hormone into unhelpful estrogen. Including broccoli in your diet a few times a week can be extremely powerful in helping you to prevent this from happening. So, there you go. Moving your router and your phone away from you when you sleep. Cooking in a way that releases less toxins into your food and eating more broccoli. None of these are hard to do. You can start by doing all of them right now and it wouldn't even feel like you've made an effort, but the effect on your estrogen levels is well worth making that step. As always, let us know in the comments below if you have any questions and also if you have blood tests you take for estrogen. We'd love to know how our tips affected your results. Check out some of our other videos and consider subscribing for more useful tips. And until next time, say...